Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Today we will talk about an application in tissue engineering. So, this is a vascular tissue engineering. So, uh, the idea for this is uh, to try to bring together all the basic fundamentals which we have looked at. Okay. So, let us discuss vascular tissue engineering which is one of the applications. So, I am not going to discuss any particular paper. However, uh, what I am going to do here is give an overview of how an application should be approached when you are talking about uh, tissue engineering. You will have to see uh, and understand the some of the biology and then try to come up with a design for how you would um, tackle the problem. Okay. So, uh, we will talk about vascular tissue engineering because that is one of the uh, popular areas which people are researching. And uh, first when we talk about vascular uh, tissue engineering, we need to understand uh, the anatomy and physiology which is very basic to start with. right? So, uh, there are different parts which are involved in the circulation, the circulatory system. So, you, the functional parts which are involved are the arteries, arterioles, capillaries, venules and veins. Okay? So, I have put them in this order because uh, an oxygenated blood first enters into the arteries from where it branches out to enter into the arterioles and then it goes into the capillaries where oxygen transfer, uh, transfer would happen and the deoxygenated blood is collected by the venules which then enters into the veins and this vein takes it back to the uh, lungs and the heart and so on. Okay. So, this is the uh, overall structure. So, the arteries transport blood at a very high pressure. Arterioles act as control valves through which the blood is transported to the capillaries because with that high pressure if it cannot enter into capillaries which actually have very thin walls. So, uh, capillaries uh, job is to ensure there is exchange of uh, fluid, nutrients, electrolytes, hormones and other, any other substance that might have to be exchanged. And uh, venules collect the blood from these capillaries and uh, veins are the conduits which transport the blood uh, from these tissues back to the heart uh, and so that it can be uh, pumped back again. So, uh, this is your heart. So, this is the detailed diagram which shows all the heart valves and uh, all the arteries and veins which are coming out of the uh, heart. So, uh, we will not bother too much about the heart anatomy and physiology here because we are only looking at the vascular tissue engineering not really about uh, cardiac tissue engineering. So, we are not trying to uh, engineer the heart, but it is important to understand uh, which uh, blood vessels are actually coming out of this uh, heart and which blood vessels are entering uh, are supplying blood to the heart. So, that uh, based on that you might have to engineer them appropriately because they will experience different kinds of pressures and flow patterns. Okay. So, if you were to look at the pressure which these uh, blood vessels experience, it is not uniform. Uh, it is not just because that uh, you have systolic and diastolic pressures, uh, uh, the pressure is also varying based on uh, which uh, blood vessel you are looking at. So, if you are looking at an aorta, the pressure is quite high, you are looking at to have close to 120, 80 to 120 mmHg, which is experienced by um, many arteries. But as it comes into arterioles, you can see that the pressure is dropping and in capillaries, the pressure is even lesser. And uh, your venules and large veins and the vena cava all have much, much lesser pressures. Okay. So, uh, basically your uh, this is because the heart is pumping the blood into the iota and because of this force there is going to be a lot of uh, pressure on the blood which is flowing into the arteries. And as it goes into the arterioles which are smaller, they act as control valves reducing the pressure and beyond that there is no uh, thrust which is pushing the bloods, right? So, it is not being pumped in any way, it is just flowing along. So, because of this, the pressure for these uh, blood vessels is lower. 
So, if we are talking about vascular tissue engineering, we need to understand what these blood vessels are, what they are made of. Uh, a vascular system uh, which, composed of, uh, which is composed of arteries, capillaries and veins, uh, you mainly look at uh, arteries when you are talking about uh, like engineering these vascular tissues. This arterial system conducts uh, oxygenated blood from the heart to the peripheral tissue, it contains three regions. So, the uh, artery basically has the innermost uh, region which is the tunica intima and you have the middle region which is the tunica media and the outer region which is the tunica adventitia. So, uh, the tunica in, uh, intima is what is exposed to the lumen which means that is what is exposed to the flowing blood. So, whereas your other tissues are not uh, exposed to blood unless there is going to be a damage to the tunica intima. Okay. So, iota is the largest artery, so which is the one which or originates from your heart and this iota then uh, starts bifurcating and it bifurcates repeatedly to form multiple arteries which then form arterioles and so on. So, muscular arteries also contain the same three layers, uh, but they have only one uh, elastic lamina. Smaller muscular arteries are called as the arterioles. Okay. So, muscular, uh, muscular arteries, they, uh, do they have uh, intima, media? Yeah, so they have all the three layers. So, uh, basically these three layers are present in everything. So, the intima, media and adventitia are present in all arteries. However, in iota and uh, these larger arteries what happens is this uh, media is much thicker. So, it has multiple layers of smooth muscle cells and it is very thick because that provides the ability for it to withstand higher pressures as you as it becomes uh, you move into muscular arteries and arterioles this layer becomes thinner. So, you just have one layer instead of multiple layers of uh, smooth muscle cells in your uh, tunica media. So, uh, capillaries are the smallest blood vessels which contain a single layer of endothelial cells and a subendothelial basal lamina, it does not have anything else. Why do you think uh, this is this has to be thin? Easy exchange of so, you want the nutrients and other things to be transported, so you want to make sure that there is no diffusion limitation, for this reason it has to be thin. So, a venous system consists of venules as well as small and uh, small medium and large veins. So, the veins are basically again composed of tunica intima, tunica media and tunica adventitia. However, uh, the compositions of these regions are different. Uh, intica and adventitia sorry intima and adventitia are similar to arterial structures. However, the media uh, contains loosely organized elastic fibers instead of tightly packed as you would see in an artery. So, veins also contain a single uh, layer of smooth muscle cells in contrast to the multiple layers which you see in uh, arteries. So, this is all de uh, dependent on what kind of pressures these are facing right. So, uh, arteries large arteries especially face very high pressures. So, the structure is designed to be appropriate for that. However, uh, the smaller uh, veins the veins do not face that kind of pressure or even smaller arterioles do not face that kind of pressure. So, obviously, their uh, structure and organization is going to be slightly different to fit the needs of that uh, tissue. So, when you are talking about cells, there are three major cells which uh, people look at. So, you have the uh, tunica intima which is the innermost layer which is nothing but an endothelial cell lining. So, this endothelial lining basically prevents blood from getting activated, platelets from getting activated. It maintains uh, blood homeostasis. So, uh, only when there is a rupture in this endothelial cell lining, you will have blood coagulation and wound, ca uh, wound healing uh, cascades starting. Okay. So, uh, smooth muscle cells are the cells which are aligned in the tunica media. So, here uh, these are very tightly packed and uh, these cells constitute the major component in that region. And finally, you have the fibroblasts which are present in your uh, tunica adventitia. So, this tunica adventitia has fibroblasts, but it is not as dense as you would see in the, uh, it is not as dense as the smooth muscle cells in your uh, media. Okay. So, these are the three cells which people have to work with and uh, you might have to arrange them in that particular uh, structure to get the tissue to emulate, what your engineered tissue to emulate what the natural tissue is. <coughs> <coughs> 
<coughs> so uh, endothelial cells are nothing but monolayer epithelial cells that, that line the blood contacting surfaces of the blood vessels. Uh, they express specific surface receptors which include uh, von Willebrand factor which is VWF and uh, VEGF receptor 1 and receptor 2 and also factor 8. So, these are all involved in uh, different aspects of uh, either angiogenesis or uh, uh, blood homeostasis. So, uh, they allow selective transport of uh, plasma substances and molecules, they regulate coagulation, they regulate uh, leukocyte transmigration, contractility, uh, vascular cell proliferation and migration. So, that is the role of the endothelial cell lining in your uh, blood vessels. So, smooth muscle cells are uh, basically fiber like muscle cells uh, which are found in the tunica media of arteries and veins. They are aligned in a circumferential direction um, of the blood vessels and uh, arteries actually contain multiple layers as I was saying whereas, uh, veins contain a single layer and uh, th this multiple layers in the arteries are organized between the elastic laminae. So, that provides the elasticity for the material for the tissue. Uh, veins contain a single layer uh, which is found right underneath the intimal layer of the venous wall. So, just below the uh, endothelial cell lining you have another layer of uh, smooth muscle cells. So, this is actually just defined by the uh, location in the uh, tissue. So, it is because they are present in the media they are the smooth muscle cells. Uh, all the cells which are localized in this region are classified as smooth muscle cells. So, some of the markers which are used to identify smooth muscle cells are alpha actin, smooth myosin 1 and uh, calponin. So, they allow for vessel contraction, relaxation uh, re and regulate vascular cell proliferation and migration. They are also involved in ECM secretion and production. Fibroblasts are the uh, last set of cells which are found in the tunica adventitia and uh, these are found to, uh, as a random organized randomly organized uh, cells and the cell density is significantly lower as I was saying. They act to produce a, the ECM and regulate vascular cell proliferation. They can uh, synthesize type 3 collagen and other proteoglycans. They also regulate the function of uh, vascular cells uh, through growth factor production. So, some of the growth factors which are produced are uh, fibroblast growth factors and epidermal growth factors. <coughs> so, um, so this ECM of the blood vessel uh, is just like other, many other ECMs you have uh, collagen and other uh, proteoglycans and uh, but they also have a lot of elastic fibers to provide the elasticity and uh, this ECM provides the structural support, mechanical strength and the elasticity for the tissue. Uh, it plays critical role in uh, development, morphogenesis uh, and pathogenic remodeling. So, basal lamina is the thin membrane which is found underneath the endothelium which serves as a supportive sub, uh, substrate for the endothelial cells. So, uh, it cannot just be cells right, you know, what we looked at three layers. So, the tunica uh, intima we said had endothelial cells, but these endothelial cells have to adhere to something. So, that is your basal lamina. And uh, basal lamina primarily consists of type 4 collagen, uh, fibronectin and laminin. And uh, when there is an injury uh, or endothelial attachment, the basal lamina initiates uh, platelet and leukocyte adhesion uh, which triggers the blood coagulation cascade. Vascular collagen matrix uh, is composed of primarily type 3 collagen. It also allows for the smooth muscle cells and fibroblasts to attach, proliferate and uh, create the required patterns. So, the elastic fibers uh, and the laminae which is present provide the elasticity, proteoglycans uh, provide the structural assembly and organization of the cells. So, each of these have their own uh, importance and uh, in the way the tissue is developed. <coughs> Sorry, okay. uh, so there is um, regulation of blood flow uh, in when it comes to uh, these tissues. So, you have to have blood vessel, uh, you have to have blood flowing in one direction. So, uh, there are local signaling molecules uh, which are generated during the metabolic processes which stimulate uh, relaxation or uh, constriction of the smooth muscle cells. 
and uh, this also augments uh, to this provides an uh, resistance to the blood vessel sorry blood flow thereby regulating the blood volumetric flow rate. So, uh, some of these metabolites include um, carbon dioxide, uh, hydrogen ions, lactic acid, AMP and ADP. <coughs> so, uh, when you exercise you can actually increase these metabolite production thereby you can in, uh, induce dilation and increase blood, fl blood flow to the heart and other skeletal muscle system. Arteries are also uh, innervated with sympathetic nerves, uh, they uh, their main function is to uh, secrete norepinephrine. So, norepinephrine which binds to these uh, binds to receptors can actually induce uh, smooth muscle cell contraction. So, uh, they can all, uh, when it binds to some other receptor the beta receptors it can actually induce smooth muscle cell re relaxation. So, this helps in uh, regulating the blood flow it helps uh, make sure that uh, there is a pulsatile uh, effect which causes the blood to flow. So, exercise can again cause uh, norepinephrine separation uh, sorry secretion um, therefore, uh, create redistribution of blood flow because you might have more of uh, more pulsatile movement of your blood vessels. So, the blood flow itself is regulated by is driven by the arterial blood pressure which is produced by the beating of the heart. However, this pressure uh, is also highly regulated by other receptors like baroreceptors and chemoreceptors, central nervous system, hormones and the vasopressin system and so on. So, baroreceptors are uh, located in the carotid sinus near the carotid bifurcation and uh, this they sense mechanical stretching due to arterial blood pressure and uh, increased blood pressure can stimulate baroreceptors uh, inducing action potentials that are transmitted to the central cardiovascular control uh, which will then reduce the activity of the sympathetic nerve system. So, that there is a dilation and reduced blood pressure. So, chemoreceptors uh, are similar in location and function, but they de uh, sense decrease in oxygen concentration and increase in carbon dioxide concentration instead of looking at uh, mechanical stretching. So, the signals which they read are different between chemoreceptors versus baroreceptors. So, uh, why do we need to look at vascular tissue engineering? So, atherosclerosis is actually a very common uh, disease condition. So, this is a progressive development of uh, atheroma which consists of ECM, cholesterol, collagen sorry calcium, uh, smooth muscle cells, macrophages and uh, it is covered by endothelial cells. So, this is a plaque which gets deposited and it is found uh, in the lumen of, uh, of the large and medium sized arteries. So, this will basically create a block which prevents uh, blood flow. So, which can cause serious complications right. So, uh, the go, uh, growing atheroma can uh, partially or completely block this lumen uh, depending on how big it is and at what stage you are looking at. This can happen uh, in different parts of your body which can cause uh, different kinds of complications. If you are having it in your brain you might end up with a stroke, if you end up if you have it in your heart you end up with a myocardial infarction, uh, if it is in the kidney you might have renal infarction and if you have lower limbs it can lead to ischemia all of these can actually cause serious tissue damage uh, and even loss of life. Does not this happen in small diameter vessels? Uh, it does. So, um, but see in small diameter vessels if one vessel is blocked it is usually not that big a problem right because you would have multiple capillaries and even if one of them is blocked uh, it may not cause very serious ramifications. However, if your large blood vessels are blocked, large arteries are blocked, it will be a serious problem because uh, supply to many regions will get affected. Okay. So, um, atherosclerosis has been uh, identified to have a lot of uh, correlation with endothelial dysfunction and uh, when there is an endothelial damage what happens is uh, endothelial permeable, permeability uh, changes and uh, cellular adhesion also changes. So, you have more fibroblasts and uh, smooth muscle cells adhering there causing 
this kind of a plaque deposition. So, that is why a lot of interest has been uh, growing with respect to understanding endothelial dysfunction and uh, atherosclerosis and looking at how diabetes affects endothelial dysfunction which can in turn cause heart disease. So, all these correlations are being studied to try and understand what is actually the cause. So, uh, that is the basic biology side of it. So, our goal is to look at uh, treating this right. So, conventionally uh, the treatments are using uh, and hyper anti hyperlipidemia agents which control the lipid levels. You just take tablets or anti, anti proliferative agents which will prevent smooth muscle cell proliferation. You can take vasodilators which will improve blood flow to the heart and reduce ischemia. Uh, you can also take, take uh, beta adrenergic, uh, adrenergic um, antagonists which will reduce the heart's work by blocking these receptors. You can end up having angioplasty uh, where uh, you mechanically open the arteries using balloon uh, inflation, but restenosis is usually a concern. So, people nowadays do not do just angi balloon angioplasty, they go uh, and place stents after placing uh, doing a balloon angioplasty. So, stents basically mechanically opens uh, the arteries with a metal frame and uh, keeps it open as long as the stent does not collapse it will stay open. Uh, again here restenosis is a concern. Uh, you have arterial reconstruction which is possible where vascular grafts uh, from autologous sources can actually be reconstructed. You can also use polymers and other uh, materials. So, you people have even tried using uh, biodegradable polymers as a for a temporary fix while this uh, while the actual plaque is being treated. So, there have been many strategies. So, with angioplasty people had initially also looked at uh, taking a a fan blade kind of a mechanism and actually uh, cleaning out this uh, plaque. But what people realized was when they do that uh, there is actually aggravation with plaque deposition. So, they have stopped doing that now they primarily do only uh, stent placements. So, these are some of the conventional treatments. There are also molecular therapies which are done uh, which attempt to treat atherosclerosis by preventing uh, cell adhesion, thrombogenesis or vascular cell proliferation, migration or intimal hyperplasia. Okay. So, uh, there are different factors uh, which and molecules which have been tried. So, people try to use mitogenic factors or cell cycle inhibitors and nitric oxide uh, pro uh, promoters which have actually been uh, used to try to prevent this uh, formation of uh, atherosclerosis or even reduce this problem. Okay. So, our goal for today is to propose a treatment model that will use a tissue engineering approach. So, basically we need to engineer uh, a vascular tissue which would be useful in uh, treating this condition. So, if that is the goal we need to identify uh, what would be the cells that are required, what would be the materials that are required, what would be the signals like so I am just putting it as a bioreactor, but what would be the signals you would want to provide to this tissue which you are creating to make sure that it is conditioned for the application you are looking at. So, this is basically what I had. So, I will just quickly go through because we are going running out of time. So, epithelial cells, smooth muscle cells, endothelial cells, scaffolds obviously biocompatible, flexible and uh, should be able to uh, withstand contractions and at the same time it should not collapse because it needs to be stable enough to uh, collapse. So, if you are going to use something natural then uh, uh, using a template of existing vasculature which would be your decellularized matrix or if you are going to use synthetic PTET and Teflon would be the alternatives which are commercially looked at. So, uh, must be rigid and flexible enough for mechanical strength uh, to train the cells because the cells which you are seeding may not have experienced the same kind of mechanical pressure. So, you need to condition them. So, the reactor uh, should actually have a pulsatile flow system which can have uh, a flow rate of about 5 liters of blood per minute and uh, should be able to withstand pressures in the range of 1 to 5 kilo Pascal. So, uh, it should also have media exchange for long term growth because you are going to have multiple uh, layers. The other uh, aspect is uh, people usually work with drug eluting stents. So, you could also look at loading drugs, uh, drug molecules to these uh, scaffolds, right. So, uh, which could help in uh, anti inflammatory properties and ensure there is better host integration. 
So that is also an aspect which people can look at. But uh, there will be challenges with respect to uh, this being weaker than the natural muscle, there can be immune response and uh, there can be further damage to the tissue while it is being placed. So these are some of the challenges which have to be accounted for.